Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm doing an unboxing of Border Reavers Anglo Scottish Border Raids from 1513 to 1603. It's designed by Ed Beach for GMT Games. Uh, don't know much about this one, it was uh, kind of interesting. Period it says its solo suitability is high, though, so that's always a good thing. Let's just dig in and see what you get inside. All right, so one thing I was noticing on the back here is it says, Border Reavers normally plays with four or six players, though two and three player versions are also supported. It also can be played solitaire using the dedicated solo components. Playing time for experienced players, players ranges from two hours for the solo and four player games up to three hours for a six player game. So it does have a solo system built into it. Very cool. All right, so we start off with the solo rulebook from GMT1. It's got their nice logo on it. Great initiative there. I think it headed up by Jason Carr, uh, you know, creating solo rule sets for games that, uh, that warrant it. So that's neat. So solo rule set, obviously there's dedicated components. We'll see those in a minute. So this rulebook comes in at about 28 pages, I think. Let's see, yeah, 28 pages. It's got a key terms index and then it's got the rules for solo. So, oh, this is kind of nice. So this is like um, several of the other recent GMT games from GMT1 that have included a solo, dedicated solo mode. Um, you don't have to read normally both rule books. You know, a lot, of, a lot of games you have to read the main rule book and read all the stuff that, you know, three, four, five players do. And then they go, okay, now here's where you change the game completely for solo. Here you're just going to read the solo rule book, follow the solo rule. It's really good of GMT to do that. I hope they're leading the way with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the industry to get that kind of as a more standard standard uh, practice. So as it says here, this set of rules is used only when you're playing the, two, the game solo. If there are two or more players, put this booklet back in the box. You won't be using it. Use the multiplayer rule book instead. So we'll take a look at both rule books because I don't know how you're going to play it. So again, it's uh, 28 pages, and then it's full, you know, full color GMT uh, matte finish stock, the good, the good quality GMT stuff, the good stuff, as they say. Um, oh, we got, uh, looks like we got meeples. We got sheep meeples and horse meeples. Wow, it's like Agricola at war. So we're gonna have cards. So it tells you how to play the game from a solo perspective. So that's pretty neat. And the rules, let's see, the rules go to, yeah, the rules go to about page 21. And then we've got in-game scoring and then an example of play to guide you through it. And like all the, uh, all the seasons here. And then the key terms index we saw earlier and then the solo score sheet. Very cool. All right, and then we have the multiplayer rule book if you're gonna play multiplayer, and it comes in at 28 pages. Go figure, eh? Again, the same good car uh, quality stock, and it just tells you, again, how to play the game from the two to five player perspective, or two to six player, excuse me. So well done, GMT, having that separate. I'm trying to see how many pages the actual rules come into here. It looks like, so you got uh, 20 page, uh, rules go to 20, advanced rules go for another page, and then we have the example of play. That goes to the end, another key terms index, border reverse score sheet. So the different families, Dicker, Fenwick, Fenwick, Gray, Maxwell, Kerr, and Hume. And then we have the historical booklet, which kind of like designer's notes. And this gives the border timeline, border history timeline. Various people, who's in charge, James, Mary Queen of Scots, James VI, James V, James VI, Henry VIII, Elizabeth I. And then just, you know, your generic history, not your generic history, but, uh, well, it does say it's got your turns here. So 
is your scenario book two. It says historical booklet, but then it's showing turn one and turn two. And it's just giving you the history of what happened in the game, in the scenarios in the game. And there's some designer's notes with some uh, some bibliography, some recommended reading. Some beautiful, beautiful photographs of the area too. The Devil's Beef Tub. The Devil has everything in in all these historical places. It's like the Devil's, you know, we're gonna go into the Devil's Nasal Cavity and hike or something. It's kind of weird. Anyway. All right, and then we have six sequence of play cards. This is unusual. These are on like half sheet coated cardstock. And obviously there's six, one for each player. Summer, autumn, winter, spring. That was a sequence of play, attack rolls, various things and defense rolls. So you get six of those. And then the different families here. We have the Thinwick, their horse limit, hand size, cattle income. And these are their reference seats, and the solo sequence of play is on there. On the back of each one. I assume it's on the back of each one. No. Nope. This one is double-sided and has the solo sequence of play. These you're gonna have set out before you and are single-sided, except I bet there's another one that's gonna have the solo sequence of play in case you're playing the Fenwick. Gray. Oh, nope. and this one's at the opposing player's draft sheet. That's part of the solo system. And Kerr has the solo sequence of play, so if you need to play the Fenwicks, you can use that solo sequence of play. And we've got the Maxwells, and it's blank, and the Humes, and that's the solo play aid. So nice work on them to maximize, uh, you know, minimize the amount of cardstock that was going to be used. And then we have the card decks for the Wardens, the event discards, the event deck, summer cards that are out of play, summer card discards. That's of course going to be single sided, as is the victory track. Goes from 0 to 100 and greater than 100. So you're going to have scoring markers. Lots of stuff in here. All right, so now we have some counter sheets. We have cattle markers. We have ones and five denominations of cow markers. And then we've got the different families here have these tokens. Obviously, you, they've got their colors here. These are half inch counters. They are you know, typical war game counters. You have to punch them and, and round them with an Oregon Laminations 2.5 millimeter deluxe corner rounder. The only tool for the job. So it looks like there's one, two, three, four, five, there's 10 of these markers for each family, except for the, except for green, they have nine. But well, there's probably another one in here somewhere. There's those. They punch, the, the pre-rounded ones punch pretty cleanly, obviously. You don't have to round those, they're already done. Good good GMT quality, thick counters. Very thick. Sheep on map. All right, now these are a little larger. Two, two counter sheets, it looks like. So we have defense markers. And there's more of the... Um, the faction colors. These are four squares. We've got some castles. Bracken Hill Tower, Fast Castle, Light Home Peel. Some attack markers. And the little horses are expended. And the basils. Sheeps and horses. Then we have our game map here. We'll look at that in a minute. And then we've got our wooden pieces. We do have meeple and uh, meeples in here. We've got a bunch of horses, horse meeples, and meeples, and then sheep. In the standard sheep shape. And then we've got some, you know, markers in the different family colors as well, cubes. All right, and then we've got a bunch of dice here. I'm not gonna roll these, there's so many of them. They're a little smaller than normal, about 12 millimeters, I would say. A bunch of blue and red for combat and defense. 
And then we've got cards. We've got turn one cards. Turn two cards. Turn three cards. And a deck of smaller cards that start with traits, but probably have some others. So let's take a look at turn one. Right, so here's turn one. There, you know, GMT makes really good quality cards, very thick, rounded corners. So these are all turn one. And so we got Sim the Laird. It's bonus attack die for raid, feud, jailbreak, and battle. Add one or more attack die of allied with the Armstrongs, Earl of Angus. Alexander Hume, early defenses, Keeper of Lidsdale, Abbot of Kelso, must be Scottish to play this card. So obviously the rules are going to tell you how these work. Day of Truce. When it's your turn, to place Notoriety, immediately add one Notoriety in your march and two in any combination of marches. Warden across border then adds one Notoriety using solo random placement rules. Very cool. So we're assuming that uh, we assume that turn three and turn two are something similar. I love the artwork on these though. Let's take a look at those real quick. It's very cool. Very unique. And then we've got these this small deck of cards. So we have traits. We have a trait like Royal Appointee. Play a Warden card twice during the game. And we have a trait of Ruthless. Reroll three dice. Use as many, desire, use as, many as desired at any time. Attack or defense until expended. You get three rerolls. Then we've got cards here for Maxwell, for Kerr, for the different families. Hume. So these are bonus cards they have, I guess. So we'll take a look at Hume. Plus one wild card. Target any march for a raid. Add one to all attack dice in that raid. So Reavers, and the Greys, the Fenwicks, and then event cards. Look at an event here. Loch Maven Fair, Scottish West March, Scottish and English, battle five, plus two notoriety for the winning side, three victory points per hit. So they're gonna battle, how rude. Enjoy the fair, people, come on. And the Daker. And let's look at that board. All right, there's a large eight panel map. It's very beautiful. Looks like, it does look like an old map. How does that feel anyway? Um, so you got the different marches. We saw the Scottish West March is up here in the corner. I guess where you can see most of it here. It's hard, it's, it, it goes uh, in uh, landscape mode. So we have the Scottish West March, the Scottish Middle March, the Scottish East March, the English West March, the English Middle March, and the English East March. So it's kind of like divided in three quadrants and the English are on the south or the, the bottom half of the board and the Scottish are on the north the top half of the board and then you got the little cities and the towns and they're, they're further divided into little regions within the marches we have debatable land and a notoriety track in each march you see that there it's tracked in horses, defense tokens, cattle. We have a, a little track here for target cards. Yeah, well done little map. Very nice. I like the graphics on it. You got the jail. Very cool. All right, so if you pick up a copy of Border Reavers, Anglo-Scottish Anglo Border Raids from 1513 to 1603, you're going to get those f three turn decks. You're going to get the varied deck of uh, family uh, cards, trait cards, event cards. You're going to get a bunch of wooden cubes for the different families, as well as some sheep and horse animals. You are going to get a big bundle of 12 millimeter dice. You're going to get that board that we just took a look at. Two sheets of counters. Not a very counter dense game. You get the enemy. You're gonna get the victory point track and the card deck tracker. You're gonna get the three family, or excuse me, the six different family reference cards or action cards, and some of them serve double duty as the solo sequence of play. 
the opposing player's draft sheet, and the solo play aid. Each player will get a half sheet sequence of play chart, backed with the attack and defense rules reference. You're going to get a, what is it, a 2016 page historical booklet and a 26. I'm going to do it right here. Let's see, 26? Yeah, no, 28 page multiplayer rule book and a 28 page solo rule book. And you only need the one that you only need to read the one that you're actually going to be using. And that is everything that comes in Border Reavers from GMT Games, designed by Ed Beach. Get on there. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!